Well, welcome to today's lesson on how to create a recipe to make great maps for Joint Operations Typhoon Rising. Essentially, this is a very simple tutorial and it will step you through the process of how we go about making a map and what ingredients we use to make a good map. And part of the sample ingredients, as we can see, is that we need to have a map name, which you'll note there's some asterisks. We'll come back to that in a second. Mission designer, the name and the author who's making the map. The map type, this tells what type of game style the map is about, cooperative, single player, etc. And the actors, and in our case we're going to use two actors on the stage. Actor 1 is the player, which is part of the blue team, and Actor 2 is the AI, or Artificial Intelligence, bot, which will be the red team. Then, what I like to call a props, this is where we would put items on our stage like buildings, objects, vehicles, decorations, foliage, or markers. And in the case of our map, we need to have a start player spawn marker for the blue team. Somewhere that the player can spawn on the map. And we need to also have an AI or bot, which is the red team component on the map as well. And lastly, or one of the other areas is the stage setting, where the environment settings for our stage. In this case we've got a fine day for the weather, roughly flat terrain, 0700 hours is when the map will start. We'll have a mild wind of speed of 15 miles per hour coming in from the north. And part of our map, in order for it to be a game, classed as a game, means that we need to have a goal. And the completion of that goal is what uh, indicates that we have completed the mission map. So we're keeping it simple. In this case, our goal is kill the AI bot on the red team. And if we meet that commission, um, our mission map will end. So let's have a look at the events. We need to have a couple of events. One has to show the player what goals are needed to complete the mission and in this case eliminate all resistance. We need to have those goals displayed and we need to have a checksum in place that says, hey, if all resistance is dead, then the goal is true. It has been met. And then final event, it says, hey, if that previous event has been met, then the game is completed and all, game, uh, all goals have been met, the game will end. So, fairly straightforward, fairly simple, evolved out of our basic scenario of the player has been inserted into a mission map at spot X around 0700, it's a fine day, the terrain is flat with no foliage or buildings, and the player must find the bad guy, AI or bot, and kill him to win the game. Okay, so now we've come back and we've got our DFX Med, which is our editing tool, up and running as we can see on the screen and we need to apply if you like uh, some changes to the mission map editor itself so we'll start at the very beginning and that is okay let's have a look we'll click edit and we'll have a look at general information now that also has a shortcut of control and I now under the general information we have to in could uh, give it a, a mission name and in the naming conventions I'm just going to use IC uh, we're using IC version 4.18 so it'll be IC 418 um, and we're also using a co-op version so IC 418 co-op and then the make name cake uh, make and it's 01. So I see 418 co op match cake make 01. 
Map Designer, Canine Pup. Mission Terrain, I'm just going to choose the basic. Mission Tiles, basic. Single player co-op. And we're going to say that uh, the map starts at 7am in the morning. There is 1440 minutes per day, so it's going to be real time. But if we wanted to have the map quicker, we could lower or reduce that down to 60 minutes, in which case in a full 24 hour period will transpire within 60 minutes. Now we mentioned that our wind speed, we're going to use 15 miles per hour or kph, and we're going to say that it's from the north, so let's say 360 degrees, and the weather is a nice day. Now, wind conditions, um, this is the game that we, this is the port where we say what are the winning conditions or goals, and we have to say all, eliminate all resistance, so all resistance in the game is eliminated. So that's pretty straightforward, we, we haven't really had to concern ourselves with any of the other items within this section. And uh, once that's been done, we can say OK. And now you'll see in your 2D view uh, that the map will show up and display. We can use the numeric keypad on your keyboard, pressing the plus key will zoom the map into a larger scale. Use the left arrow key on the numeric keypad to move backwards left or right and the down arrow key on the keypad and as you can see we're zooming in closer and closer. And this is a top-down view and for this stage of our map making it's most probably the simplest way to have a look at things. So let's get back to our map ingredients. We've done our names, our single player, but now we're at the stage. This is the stage for our map. We need to actually put some actors on the stage and that is an actor for the uh, player and an actor for the bot. And in order to do that we will have to go up to edit, select the insert mode and you'll notice that insert also appears up on the top right to alert you that you are in insert mode. And the first thing we're going to do is insert a player spawn point. And that is a marker. So if we look under markers, we see all the various markers that are available. The one we need to scroll down to is called Start Player. Fairly straightforward. We scroll down in the markers to Start Player. We click on that, OK, and we'll see that a little triangle has now appeared on our gamepad. That is the Start Player marker. The next one, whilst we're still in the insert mode, is we need to put in an AI. So we'll click elsewhere on the map, and in this case we're going to insert a person. So we'll select people, we're going to select uh, most probably the Indonesian pilot with a pistol. And you can see that as we scroll through these images, it shows you what we're going to put in. So in this case I'm selecting a uh, Indonesian pilot with pistol. Click OK. And you'll notice that it is now showing up as a green item. If I right click anywhere on the mouse area or the map area, I can unselect or deselect the insert mode. Now one of the things that we have to concern ourselves with at this particular point is we've just inserted a player a start point and a AI player, but have we got them at the right height? And a quick way of confirming the right height would be to click and highlight the Indonesian soldier, right click and select from the drop down snap to terrain and that will snap it just to the terrain at whatever height the terrain is. We deselect it by clicking it once more, 
we do now the same activity for play a spawn point, snap to terrain, then deselect it. So we've now selected our two characters and we have them on the, um, the map terrain. If we highlight our Indonesian soldier again and go across we can see the info, there's the thumbnail so we can always be double sure. If we double click on the selected it brings up a whole new menu if you like of activities that we can apply to the Indonesian pilot and in this case he's the ones that we want to focus on um, is that he's on the red team so he's evil he's going to shoot us his alert state is green so he's um, hasn't been aware of our presence to start off with weapon accuracy uh, we can go through those in a little bit more detail later but uh, suffice to say we'll leave it at the default settings there for the moment but we can change many of these to make our map a little bit more complicated later select OK deselect by clicking on it once more now we mentioned that in our activities if you like our, our goals that we had to kill an AI on the team well the player needs to know that they need to be aware of the fact that they have to do a activity or action whilst playing the map and as they reach and complete that goal then the map will end so we'll go back into edit we'll go back into what we call our events and this is where we need to show what the uh, events are for the player. And in the case of this event, our first one, it's a pre-mission event and we can delay it by five seconds, ten seconds. It doesn't require an if statement because it's pre-mission but our action is uh, when we double click on action it'll bring open the action type and what we want to do is uh, pretty much show the uh, win sub goal. Now you'll notice there's an action type below that. Now the sub goal number is eliminate all resistance and it has a variable status here of zero. If we click OK now we'll see it says hide the win sub goal. Well, we don't actually want to hide it, we want to show what the sub goal is. So we'll double click on it again. This time we'll go back to the variable status and we'll select one. Now when we click OK it will display show win goal. So we might just change the delay into uh, 10 seconds. So 10 seconds after uh, the player's been into the game as a pre-mission event it will provide a show win sub goal. Okay, that's fantastic. We've now got our win sub goal. What is our next item that we need? And that is, well, we need to know we've been shown what the sub goal is. We now need to be able to check whether that sub goal um, is true. So, our event, our next event is starts with an if statement and its trigger type is going to be based on the SSN so the SSN is a social security number if you want to call it a unique identifier every object in the game map is going to have one so we have a look here and we'll see that there's an Indonesian pilot with pistol number two. We'll click on him and if it's true, if he's alive or if it's false, if he's alive. So if SSN has been killed, number two, the Indonesian pilot, then we can show the uh, 
win the sub goal. Sub goal will eliminate all resistance. So now what will happen is it will display the sub goal as being one. Give it a two second delay. Our third event needs to check if event number one is true. So if event number one, which is he's been killed, has been triggered, then we're going to win the game. Pretty straightforward. Delay it for 15 seconds. So, what we're saying is essentially the three events that we have, and let's have a look at these again under events. First event is show the sub goal, which is eliminate all resistance. Our second event is if SSM2, our Indonesian pilot with a soldier, has been killed, then we win sub goal one. Third one is if event one has been triggered, which is winning the sub goal one, then the blue team will win and the map will end. So now we can have a look at it. Let's just quickly click OK and we'll save the file, save as, and again remembering we'll use IC418 co-op, so it's IC is the mod, version 418, it's a co-op game, dash, cake, make, zero, one. And at the moment it's going to save it in the Joint Operations Typhoon Rising directory, Program Files. So we save that and we'll go File. We need to export the binary mission. And it will be the same name as a BMS. We'll save it into the directory Joint operations, two people, one marker, OK. That's all we have to do at this particular point. Our next step is to open up the game and have a look at what happens next. So we've opened up the game and we can find our map. I see 418 co op dash cake make zero one click on that it will load the map and we can see that our objective marker uh, has been added at the start of the game that was our first event and if we were to press the G key we should be able to see mission objectives eliminate all resistance so pressing that will list the information see the bots now having a bit of a go at us, shooting away, and killing the resistance pilot will complete the objective. You can see there's now an X in the box for eliminate all resistance. And we gave it a slight delay at completion of that, but pretty much game finishes. We get to see that all of the objectives were completed, the enemy targets were all destroyed, and our game has ended correctly. Congratulations, that's your first game.